hold the fuck on. Hold the mother fucking fuck on a second. Are people actually out there talking about a Trump win being inevitable? You're talking about the twice impeached, quadruply indicted, 34 times convicted, adjudicated rapist business fraud who kept our national security secrets in his effing bathroom and wanted to see his VP hanged for not breaking democracy? The sociopath who golfed while thousands of Americans were dying a day and asked about injecting bleach is some kind of f***ing given? The dictator on day one who said he could shoot someone in the middle of Fifth Avenue and would inherit a Supreme Court that would actually let him do that. That, guys, winning is already written? Really? The child separating races to his promising detention camps and mass deportations? The Putin puppet who will abandon NATO? We're just gonna surrender to that guy and all the accompanying awful that comes with him now in July? Because he's got a panty liner on his ear thanks to a twisted that his hands on a weapon we've all been trying to ban? Are you f***ing high? Huh. Well, my guest today matches that energy. It is Tara Setmeyer, who I love, uh, absolute favorite people on the planet. And she has launched a brand new org called the Seneca Project, which is a bipartisan super PAC led by women, dedicated to mobilizing women voters in key swing states in support of Joe Biden's reelection, with a focus on safeguarding women's rights, healthcare access, and the preservation of democracy. They are galvanizing this crucial demographic to vote for President Biden and to defeat the extremist MAGA agenda. Tara is galvanizing women from all across the political spectrum to fight against Donald Trump and his extreme anti-woman agenda. <laughs> this was another great conversation. I loved every second of it. She gave me exactly the kind of energy I needed to fill my cup up, to steady my spine, and keep fighting. So I hope you enjoy. Welcome back to the Are You Effing Kidding Me podcast. Tara Setmeyer, I am so fired up to talk to you right now. You just said to me off camera, women are going to save this democracy. Let's jump right in. Let's start there. Yes. Thank you for having me back, Joe. I mean, you and I have bonded over being <laughs> tough Jersey girls and not everybody gets that, but you, they know that I'm very proud of being from Jersey. I wear my Jersey girlness on my sleeve and, you know, to find someone else in Patico that way that we're, we're like, we just get it. I, I love you. So thank you for having me back. It's always fun to have a chat with you and, and we can always like do our Jersey girl, um, asides <laughs> like about being down the shore and like real bagels and pizza. So <laughs> Taylor Ham. Right? And not taking any shit, right? Because we just don't. And that leads me to what we're doing. Um, I'm so thrilled to announce to people the launch of uh, my new organization, the Seneca Project. I co-founded it with the former Lincoln Project creative director, Michelle Kinney. We both said, look, women are under attack. Our rights are under attack in this country. And democracy is too important to us as women, not only just democracy in general, to our freedoms as Americans, Americans, but women take the brunt of this when our freedoms are taken away. And it, this election is literally a choice between life and death for women. So Michelle and I said, this is too important. We've got to do this. We really need to have a women-led organization where we are talking to each other. Because we looked at the political landscape and it really it was kind of shocking to us, actually, that there were no there was really no organization or super PAC, which is what we are talking to regular everyday average women. Mm -hmm. You've got the issue, the issue groups that are on like the left or that are very issue specific or on the right. Obviously, you have the crazies over there, the moms for liberty, nuts and stuff like that. Yeah. But who's talking to like the regular right of center, left of center women who are not as politically dug in? but are looking around going, what the hell is going on in this country? And who's talking to me? Who's talking to, to us about this? So that's where the Seneca Project comes in. And the way we got the name is from uh, the birthplace of the women's rights movement in Seneca Falls, New York in 1848. Uh, Michelle, Michelle is from upstate New York. She's actually from uh, Watertown and she went to Syracuse. Mm -hmm. So when we were thinking about names for the organization, I said, you know, 
it would be really cool if we could call it the Seneca Project. And because we thought like somebody definitely has that yeah. or like we couldn't use it. And when we did our research, no one had the name. And we were like, OK, this is it. It's serendipitous. This is what we're calling it. Because if you are familiar with the convention, the Seneca Falls Convention, which we're coming up on the anniversary, by the way, it's uh, July 19th and 20th. But the, in 1848, it was a coalition. It was a it was a coalition of tough, brave, courageous women who said enough is enough. They were tired of being treated as second class citizens. And they were like, wait a minute. We live in a country that has a Declaration of Independence and a Constitution that talks about all men are created equal. Well, women should be included in that, too, because we should be treated as equals. Our rights matter. And they decided to come together and start to fight for those rights. And it wasn't just women. There were male allies, too, which was important. Like, we're not a man-hating organization. We, we welcome the, the male allies. We need them. It's going to take all of us. Yeah. But that you had male allies. You had abolitionists. You had African-Americans. Like, it was a coalition effort, everyone coming together to focus on women's rights and women's equality. And then, obviously, the women's, uh, women's right to vote, which took 72 years um, and only some women, black women didn't get the full equal rights to vote uh, until the 60s. So, but it, it's been a legacy that we felt the idea of having to, to pick up the mantle, because we're in a position now again, Joe, where like, we've got to fight for that legacy. It's being taken from us. Our rights are being taken from us. And that's never happened in the history of this country. A right has never been taken away. Right. And that's what we've seen happen. And so <laughs> Thus, the Seneca Project was born, and we are looking at this as a coalition effort, and we firmly believe that if you galvanize women, we will be able to save this democracy, and that's our goal. I mean, sign me up, right? Like, so <laughs> to your point about us being, uh, uh, you know, bonded for, for as being Jersey girls, yeah, that is a thousand percent true. What is so funny about that is that, politically speaking, 10 years ago, you and I would have not aligned at all on no. anything. Right. Even five years ago before well, I quit the party. Right. Right. And it would have been like, no, I can't work with that person. I can't talk to that person. Right. You know? Or you would agree that you disagreed and you would never really find a coalition because you were just sort of siloed in your own places. And That's there was true. Really no need. But now all bets are off. I love the idea of galvanizing women because we are all in this together now. This isn't even political at all. They don't care that I'm a Democrat and you were a former Republican. They don't care how anybody votes. They're taking those rights. You said it to a very valid point that we had away from us and they're not done. It's not just Dobbs. It's That's not right. just IVF and contraception, which may be coming. It's not that, that they'll let us bleed out or die from sepsis in parking lots. They'll come for all of it. And as women, we have got to park all of our other beliefs somewhere else right now and get under this one tent, which is let me stand up for myself and my sisters because this is under attack. It's not political. I love what you're doing. I fucking love the name. Thank it's you. It's so inspiring and it's so like crystal clear at, as far as how you identify and what's at stake. But I, I am on board. I agree with you about the coalitions. I agree with you about this being bigger than anything else at this moment. And I'm like, I'm so 1000% on board with this. I can't I, listen. I, we appreciate that. Like if you go to our website, Seneca project.us, you'll see that the, besides our galvanized women save democracy, our tagline, but the, we talk about, the attack, the assault on women transcends party lines. And that's why we we consider ourselves bipartisan. Michelle can't, comes from Democratic world. Obviously, I come from longtime Republican world. I joke that we're the ebony and ivory of politics. <laughs> and um, but our like even our advisory uh, committee, we have Senator Barbara Boxer, who is someone that I probably never agreed with on one policy issue the entire time she was in office. But yeah. one thing I did agree with was that she was a champion for women and she was a badass at a time where even if we didn't agree, she, her representation mattered. And she is on board with us because to your point, it doesn't, those policy differences in the past don't freaking matter if we don't have our democracy and that, and if we don't have our rights. So we are, we are simpatico on this and like we have we have Congressman, former Congressman Denver Riggleman, who is a girl dad, and mm -hmm. he probably never agreed with anything Barbara Boxer said when she was <laughs> in office. 
But here he is with us in this fight because he doesn't want to see a future for his daughters and granddaughters. He's got three granddaughters, too. He's the only man in the household for him. And he's got a kick-ass wife who makes awesome bourbon, award-winning bourbon. They own a distillery in Virginia called Silverback Distillery. So you guys are ever there, (laughs) bourbon fans, it's amazing. But anyway, but he appreciates women and, and the empowerment uh, the importance of empowering women. And he's like, F that. I'm not trying to be live in a, in a country that where my wife and my daughters and granddaughters are second class citizens. F that. I'm with you. We have, um, if you're a fan of Marvelous Mrs. Maisel or Family Guy, we have Alex Borstein, who is the voice of Lois Griffin. And she's the oh. Emmy Award winning. She was the agent on, on Marvelous Mrs. Oh Maisel. She's with us 100% in. She's like, F that. No one's going to take my rights from me. I'm an American. You know, my kids and our future, like, no. So wh- where do we go? What do we do? So she was, she's on board with us. And then we have Maria Cardona from CNN, who's her. someone that, you know, I spent years on CNN as a, as a political commentator. And Maria and I go back to 2008, where we used to battle like hell <laughs> on opposite sides. I was um, watching. Huge- <laughs> yeah, mutually respect for mutual respect for one another, of course. Yeah. You know, friendly disagreements, but we always respected each other. And she's on our our on our um, advisory committee because she believes so strongly in what we're doing. And then we have um, my good friend Rena Shah, who is one of the a Republican woman, uh, political communications expert. You've probably seen her on CNN and all over News Nation. And she was one of the first Republican delegates in 2016 to say no to Donald Trump. She said, "I'm not, I'm not casting my ballot for him at the convention. No freaking mm. way." Mm. And they threw, they ran her out of the party. You know, right. they she still identifies as a Republican because she still thinks that she can change it from within. Mm. I made the decision in 2020 that it needs to burn to the ground. But it's important for her as a mom of three young daughters to her. She's saying, listen, guys, this isn't about those policy differences. This is about all of us coming together as women because it tra- the threat to our lives and our rights and our daughter's rights, it transcends party lines. So we need to come together so that we can win. Like I have my little poster in the back. It says together we can win. That's <laughs> Yeah. Because that's what it is. We and, and I think that that makes us unique. That makes us different from other political organizations because we don't give a damn if you voted for Donald Trump twice. That's mm-hmm. your problem. That's in the past. We yeah. just don't want you voting for him again. Yeah. 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 We don't care. We're not trying to recruit you to be a Democrat. We're not trying to recruit you to be a Republican or do whatever. No. We're trying to explain what's at stake in clear and plain language. What's at stake? And hope that women make the right choice for their future and their and on our generation's future. Because the choice we make in this November could have incredibly dire consequences if they make the wrong choice. Yeah. And oh, I love all of that. And it's so important, too, because you're not slamming the door in anybody's faces like, sorry, no, right. you didn't do the right thing. You're not chastising them for other choices that they've no. made. Like, that's the thing, too, is like this arms open policy of like, like, look, we all did our own things. Maybe we didn't see clearly. Maybe we didn't understand that the threat was as real as other people were saying it was. Yeah. And also, it's not the same threat that it was. This Correct. damn thing has jumped the shark like Fonzie times a thousand. <laughs> right? We're, not, we're yeah. not talking about the 2016 threats that we used to hypothesize about. We're talking about Project 2025, which I know you talk about a lot. Mm-hmm. If you can get into a teeny bit, because I know we're like, we don't have all the time in the world, but we also got to get to the fact, two things. I want to just jump on this idea of, that you have this allyship that isn't just women. There are so many men and girl dads out there and grandpas and yes. brothers and sisters who are like, you know what? I don't I don't want this for my daughter. I don't want this for my wife or my sister or my mom. And they're like, this is just common sense, right? That's what yes. it is, common sense. Yes. Particularly okay. millennial dads. We, we've seen research that shows that it's really the millennial dads that are the most horrified right now. Because they're they're like, wait, wait, what? What do you mean my daughter has less rights than my grandmother did? Like, this, there's something fundamentally wrong with that. I don't want yeah. my daughter growing up in that environment. And we also found research that showed that the relationship between a dad and his daughter is the most powerful relationship when it comes to persuading or changing behavior. Mm. More so than spouses, more so than siblings, daddy, daughter. <laughs> and I'll give you an example. So um, a couple years ago in 2020, I had the the humble privilege of being a Harvard resident fellow, and I got to spend a semester up at Harvard. And we had students assigned to us where we had like a little chief of staff, and we had you know hmm. different. Um, it was very cool. I, I I loved it. It was a really awesome experience. 
Mm-hmm. And my chief, of, my student chief of staff graduated. She was a woman, kick ass. She's a girl and she graduated and she went into the military and she's an, uh, a, a military intelligence officer right now. And in 2020, she said, she told me that she cried to her dad because her father was a state Republican official for many years. And she literally cried to her father and said, daddy, you are, you say you're proud of me. You say, you know, I've graduated from Harvard. I'm now serving our country in the military. How could you possibly want me to have to salute that man as my commander in chief? And she said that it knocked her father back on his ass because he never thought about it that way until she went to him with that raw emotion. And Mm -hmm. he was like, you're right. And he did not vote for Donald Trump in 2020. So, you know, that's just an anecdote from just from my circle of 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 women and and who and with their relationships relationships with their dads, where I was like, wow, you know. And so, and there's research to back it up that that has has an impact. So when we look at the swing states and we look at what who we're targeting and how we're targeting them, I mean, look. There's plenty of other organizations that are a lot bigger than ours that are much more well-funded than ours that have been around for a long time. I mean, we're scrappy and we're obviously we, we need all the funding we can get. So if people that for the people who have already supported us, thank you so much, please tell your friends and support us more so we can put our content out there and get it in front of those people in these battleground States, because that's where this election is going to be won or lost. And looking at that, We're like, we just need to move a couple percentage points. They just need a permission structure not to vote for Donald Trump again. We are pro-President Biden. We think he's done a great job. We have not piled on to the people who think that Biden should be removed and they need to switch the tickets. It's just not practical. I understand the reaction, but like, it's not practical. It's too late in the game. And he's already the only person who's proven to beat Donald Trump. Everybody else, it's a wild card. So- You know, we're looking at it like, look, these women, these right of center women, the ones who were like Nikki Haley voters, or if you want to call them that, I mean, she sold out and decided to jump on the Trump train, which is just so disappointing because she could have been a hero. (laughs) Could have been a hero. I know. I mean, I predicted it. I was like, listen, people, (laughs) she's not going to be the hero you think, but there's always a little hope. But those voters obviously were looking for somewhere to go. You saw Mm -hmm. them still voting against Donald Trump in open, closed primaries. And so we're like, those are the people that need, they can't stay home. Like you can't stay home. You have to be active. Democracy does not defend itself. We have to be active voters. You don't, nobody's saying you have to love Joe Biden or you have to agree with everything he's done, but he's not that guy. I mean, and he's a champion for women. Right. So even if you disagree with him on lots of other things, or you think he's too old or whatever, he is still a good and decent man who loves this country, appreciates our democracy, And doesn't want to be a dictator on day one and tear up our constitution and subjugate women. He doesn't. And his wife actually loves him. And he actually loves his wife and never cheated on her and doesn't have, you know, five kids by three different women. I mean, let's just think about the character difference. That matters. We have to get back to character and honesty mattering in this country or we're going to lose it. Oh, amen, 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 amen. As he says, <laughs> I am Jill Biden's husband. Yes. He's adorable. I just want to back up to the dad part because I was raised by my dad. My dad took full custody of five kids in 1979, which like nobody God ever bless. did back then and raised us. And he was a Republican. He was a Republican. No offense to anybody, but up until George Bush, George W. Don't George W. Bush. But we had conversations all the time in the car. We battled and battled and battled. And we always <laughs> ended those conversations with love and respect and I see you kind of stuff. And mm-hmm. I think that, that is discourse that is sadly missing, but my dad shaped my political arc in this world in a very different way because I was like, Dad, you're wrong about everything. So I <laughs> <laughs> but I, I we, we got it. We got to hit on this one thing too about this war on women because it's so important. Because breaking news today, and less than an hour ago, is Donald Trump, white guy rapist Donald Trump, rags but grabbing man by the pussy, has just selected for his vice president a man who says abused women should stay in abused marriages and wants to do away with no fault. I mean, wants to have no fault divorce. Wait, no, do away. Get with rid of it. it. Yeah. Right. Sorry. My brain. But yeah, J.D. Vance 
flip-flopping Trump is like Hitler, J.D. Vance is his pick for VP. What does that tell us about who they want the world and the American people to see they are? Let me tell you, Joe, I, when I saw that, first of all, for those who don't know, J.D. Vance was one of the OG never Trump Republicans. Back in 2015, he was, he, like you said, called Trump Hitler. He warned about what a disaster it would be if Donald Trump was president of the United States. Him, Eric Erickson, there were a bunch of the original never Trumpers. I was part of that group. I, I was never on board with Donald Trump, even though I was a Republican. I was one of the people saying, like, there's no way the party's going to acquiesce to this fucking guy. Like, no way. And I was obviously very, very, very wrong. Um, we weren't alone, was, though. I know yeah. I wasn't. I wasn't. Yeah. I just maybe I was Pollyanna on this. I, I don't know. But again, coming from Jersey, I knew what kind of an asshole Trump was. And I was familiar with what he did to Atlantic City. I knew all about the tabloid nonsense. He was not a serious person to anybody from the New York, or New Jersey area, because we saw this through his whole career. Like, this guy, like come on. The joke. I know, no, neither here nor there at this point now. But J.D. Yeah. Vance was one of those people in the beginning that was like, no. But then obviously we saw he got a taste of power and made a calculated decision to completely sell his whole soul uh, and become a full on Trumper. And if you look on you look at it, look where he is. He is now a vice presidential candidate of the United States. What a freaking crazy story arc. But this guy's dangerous because he's not stupid. Yeah. He's very smart. He's actually a tech bro. You know, yeah. the, his whole book about hillbilly elegy, where he talked about how he grew up in rural Ohio and Appalachia and all of that, you know, that was that came from what we all thought was an honest place. That's why it was a New York Times bestseller. And people were fascinated with his uh, observations about that part of the uh, of the country and kind of how they would become uh, susceptible to Trump's BS. But he's a hillbilly huckster uh -huh. and. You know, just because he married himself a little ethnic wife and has this little perfect family now trying to create this image, he is speaking about things that are even more right than MAGA. And he's the kind he's like the like the Steve Bannon types that are like these evil geniuses that are really smart and know how to manipulate the system and make it sound normal. Now, a lot of what Bannon says obviously doesn't sound normal, but he's not a dumb guy. Mm -mm. And so which is why he's got such a large following. J.D. Vance is out here, like you mentioned, when he was running for Senate, he was talking about no fault divorce and how that's a problem and how back in the day. Right. They always say make America great again. And we always say, well, when are you talking about exactly? Well, I guess J.D. Vance is OK with a time when women had no agency when they got married. Because there was a time where women couldn't even open up their own bank accounts without a signature of their husband or get a credit card without the signature of their husband. It wasn't all that long ago, folks. It was like 1975, four, 74 mm -hmm. is when that mm -hmm. changed. OK, so they want to go back to a time where women are in the kitchen. And he talked about his grandparents and how they had a really, really rocky marriage. It wasn't it wasn't happy marriage, but. But that women, you know, they stayed in those marriages for the good of the children. And sometimes that's what you need to do, even if it's violent. What? This is in 2024, people, 20, you know, 2022. You need to stay in a marriage, even if it's violent for the kids. What the fuck? No. How about no? No, you don't. No, you don't. And he can say all he wants to try to moderate his position on abortion. But he is an anti-choice guy. He is a hyper nationalist populist that is a Putin uh, apologist who wants to be an isolationist who thinks that it's perfectly OK for women to be second class citizens. Do not let his moderation now and his double talk fool you. Look mm -hmm. at his record. So yes. this is a guy. And, and frankly, you know, for us at Seneca, looking at galvanizing women, this couldn't have been a better pick for us because it proves our point that Donald Trump would pick a guy that looks at women this way. Um, I'm not okay with that. Are you? Hell I don't no. think so. I think most women in this country, do we take a look at that and go, no, these are not the people we want in charge of our future. No. Absolutely not. No. And, and the war on women, like you said, they're not even hiding it. Anymore. They're not even a little bit hiding it. He didn't even pretend to pick a woman. He didn't pretend to pick a person of color. He picked no. a white dude. 
who is just as extreme on some of these positions as he is. A, a white dude has made it clear that yeah. he believes that women that our rights should be stripped from us, that we should mm -hmm. be reversed, that the clock should be rolled back. And I think that is very telling that they think they can win with that ticket. I think they are yep. undermining. Uh, I think they are underestimating uh, what we women, what the Seneca Project, what galvanized women can do and will do when pissed off. My yes. God, you're going to do this in the first presidential election since Dobbs? Yes. Okay. We all saw how they voted in Ohio on ballot one. We also yep. um, uh, we also saw how they voted in Kansas and other red states on these issues. We all saw that you can get people, like you said, maybe they're Nikki Haley voters. Maybe they're people who just show up to say, I don't like Donald Trump. Maybe you can get them to go, a J.D. Vance Donald Trump ticket? Mm -mm, no. And I think mm -hmm. that that's where you come in. That is your, your sweet spot. I think what you're going to do is you're going to have this giant tent where people are going to be like, I want, I, I'm out here. I want someone to open their arms to me. I don't want anybody to tell me I don't belong because I have right. a voice and I have stuff to care, that I care about. And yep. I, I want a place to, to go and put that. And so thank you for that. And I'm going to wrap with one, one last question. Like sure. when, right now, we've got a lot of stuff. I got people DMing me. I'm sure you do all the time. Holy crap, we're losing, we're losing, I'm losing hope with the Cannon decision and the shooting and the this and the that. It feels like the momentum has shifted. Uh, I don't know about Biden, which, by the way, you and I are clear, like, this, this is the course. Stop jumping without a parachute, people. Yep. But, like, what would you say right now to somebody who's DMing you or texting you, like, Tara, I'm I'm feeling like we're losing. What do we do? I'm, I'm losing heart. Listen, I, I say that we cannot, if you love this country, we cannot let the other side break us down to the point where we lose hope. That is part of the authoritarian playbook. They are very motivated. They are very organized and they're very well funded and they are counting on the other side. They're counting on all of us being worn down and just capitulating. Timothy Snyder, who is a historian and author, he wrote the book on tyranny. I suggest yeah. everyone read that. Read if that. you haven't read it, it's a, it's a short read, but it will scare the shit out of you and you make and wake you up to realize that we cannot capitulate. He has put that out. We you cannot capitulate now. Keep marching on. You look at the women in the suffrage movement. It took them 72 years from Seneca Falls to women's right, the constitutional right to vote 72 years. And they never gave up. And then it was another 40 plus years before women, all women, black women had a right to vote equally in this country as well. A hundred years from the uh, end of the, the Civil War, hundred years of Jim Crow to civil rights in this country. But guess what? They kept marching on. We have to do that because if it's not us, then who? And if it's not now, then when? We still have the power at the ballot box to say not no, but hell no to going down this road of authoritarianism and fascism and illiberalism in this country. And women have the ability to get out there. We make up a larger percentage of the voting population. So it literally is up to us. It is up to us. And we can still do that. George W. Bush, George H. W. Bush was down 17 points at this point in 1988. 17 points. The summer doesn't matter. It doesn't. What matters is September and October. That's when it matters. You cannot get discouraged by polling right now. You need, we have to stay focused. We have to understand what's at stake and not lack imagination of what those other bastards and MAGA will do to us. If you don't believe me, Listen to them. They tell us every day. We have put out an ad called Project 2025 Pay Attention, where we just took a little snippet of some of the things that the authors of Project 2025 and Trump allies have said about what they want to do to women, from taking away the right to vote to saying we don't deserve to have our own sports leagues to saying that, oh, if you're wearing shorts and you get raped, <laughs> that guy's going free. You deserved it. That's just the tip of the iceberg of what these people think. Did you see the reaction over the weekend to the, the, the Trump shooting? These guys, these MAGA guys went after the female Secret Service agents and tried to say, oh, well, what do you expect? Those women should they, there should be no women in the Secret Service. They're, they're inferior to us. Mm -hmm. Well, last time I checked, there was a bunch of white dudes that were on the JFK protection detail and have that end up. Same thing right. with Reagan. So they need to shut the fuck up. 
How right. dare they come for us or come for the competency of the female secret service director? I mean, the secret service deserves scrutiny, but don't you dare try to say that because they, they, these are DEI hires and that's what's weakening our country. No, mm. what's weakening our country are people like that who have a disdain for the fact that women are badass, women can do the job, that we are, we are um, you know, taking, taking jobs away from men who are failing up all the time and women can do the job better and that we have those opportunities, especially mm -hmm. not only just, just, you know, women in general, but God forbid, let it be a woman of color. They don't yeah. like it. They don't like right. it. And there's a problem with that. These are, you know, weak men are scared of strong women Ugh. and you can just see the way that they react to us. And that tells you everything you need to know. Is that the country you want to live in? No. So that's what I say. Do not get discouraged. Do not let the other side co-opt our patriotism and our agency as Americans. I'm not going to let these bastards run us out of our own country. We shouldn't. We still have the ability for now mm -hmm. to make that difference. And if we don't use it now, we may never get that chance again. Just ask the Eastern Bloc countries in Europe how long it took them to try to get their democracy back when they thought, oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, I can stay home. Oh, it's not going to be that bad. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It can be because I'm telling you right now, we cannot take our democracy for granted. It's not, it's kind of like gravity, right? <laughs> or, or the air. You just kind of yes. take, it, take it for granted. Like, oh, it'll yeah. always be there until it isn't. Right, right. <laughs> we cannot do that. Democracy does not defend itself. No, we no. have to defend it and protect it and nurture it and take care of it. It's our responsibility. We have one job as citizens besides being good and decent people. It's to vote and make sure that you have people in power making decisions for our lives that are in line with your values and that will value the Constitution. That's it. We yeah. cannot let them do this. Do not capitulate. I'm not. I'm fired up. Let's go. We need to fight even more. And if you don't, if you ever feel like it's hopeless, listen to what Trump says, listen to what the MAGA people are saying and make a conscious decision that you're not going to let them get away with it. The ballot box is where you win. Oh my God. 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 This is like the therapy. Like I shot you. I'm like, I freaking needed you to say all the things that I freaking needed. Because even though like, again, like you could disagree with someone on a million twin things at the end of the day, Tara, I am also not quitting. I'm not capitulating. Do not tell me what I have to resign myself to accept. That's I right. I have to resign myself to accept authoritarians. I do not have to resign myself to accept, accept school shootings. I do not have to resign myself to accept the normalization of political violence. I do not have to resign myself to accepting a rapist business felon, greater felon as my president for my children, for everyone's children, for the future of this country. Do not tell me I have to accept your reality because that is just going to make me want to punch your throat even harder. And that's, that's right. where we are right now. And that's I right. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your spirit, for your energy, for your fight, for your determination, for your badassery, <laughs> and for your ingenuity and in coming up with this incredible organization, Super PAC. It's amazing. You are amazing. You, I talked to my friend Jess Piper the other day, and she was also this like giant, like shot of adrenaline in your arm. I needed this is what everyone needs because this is not about whether you vote Republican or Democrat. This is whether or not you want a functioning effing democracy so that we can fight tomorrow about those other things we disagree about that's right Holy shit, tara i am yes. so obsessed with you girl oh thank you where thank can you go to find seneca project yeah where you send them all the places please absolutely so we are at seneca project.us seneca project.us that's our website you can donate there you can also see our ads there you can see our content and um get a little bit more familiar with who's involved with us so far uh we it's been the, the i have to say the re the reaction the reception we've only been operating publicly for the last three and a half weeks almost four now and it's just been incredible so it really it really reinforces michelle and i's um idea and our desire to do the right thing that people are like thank you so much for this we're like yeah. we're glad that we're not the only ones because we <laughs> need everybody we need everyone's yeah. you know support yeah. Um, yeah. So SenecaProject.us and then our social media, it's all at Seneca Project US, Twitter, okay. Facebook threads. And we just started a TikTok. Uh, so, you know, Ooh. we're yeah, we're starting the TikTok thing where we're, you know, we, we could use some help with TikTok because I, I'm almost 50. I'm 48. And like, I feel very boomer when it comes to that. So so I'm like, boomer. I don't know how to use this. I don't know how to use this. So thank oh, God. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> yeah, we need some help on the, on the TikTok thing. But. <laughs> 
uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook threads, uh, and, and Instagram. We're all there. And Michelle and I have started to do a show called the stakes. And, uh, we started last Thursday at seven and we decided, you know, we need to try to do this more consistently so that we can interact with folks, answer their questions, talk about the stakes going into 2024. We, we, we have to keep reinforcing that because let me tell you what, our first ad was called a time for choosing. Mm -hmm. And we picked, we picked that very specifically that theme because a, it was an homage to Reagan. And of course, Michelle was like, Oh, because she comes from Dem world. And I'm like, but see, I was a Dem and I I grew up worshiping Reagan. Well, yeah. I mean, listen, we can all talk, you know, argue over Reagan's legacy, but he was a hell of a communicator and that time for choosing speech is epic and so she was like we don't sit around watching like old reagan speeches tara (laughs) i was like i get it so i sent it to her and she watched it and she called me right away and was like oh my god okay you were right and it inspired our first ad and michelle and i wrote it together i've never written political ads i mean she comes from um doing that for years with lincoln project but she she didn't really write the scripts and so we were a little nervous about it but it came from our heart so when you read Mm. watch our first launch ad a time for choosing that is all Michelle and I um, writing from our hearts what we believed. And so it was important for us to, to that, that our launch ad was us. You know, we have a little more help now, but like we are very involved in writing our ads and our messaging because like we said, we are women speaking to women. Yeah. So we wanted to make sure that that perspective comes out. Yeah. So the idea that it's a time for choosing because it is folks, this is, this ain't a time to sit on the sideline. It's a time to freaking choose. You cannot mm-hmm. be passive in this election and you mm-hmm. can't vote third party. Cause that's bullshit. And it's all it is, is a throwaway vote for Trump. Yep. Um, but the other thing too, and I will leave this with you. Women have had the privacy to make their own political, their own healthcare decisions up until Dobbs that's been now taken away. But the right of privacy to what you do at the ballot box has not. So it doesn't matter when you're in that ballot booth or when you have your ballot and you check that box. That is a choice between you and your ballot. No one has to know what choice you made. You don't have to explain it to anyone. And it's a vote of conscience. So for those women who feel some kind of way like, oh, I've never voted for a Democrat or, oh, my husband will be really mad at me if I if I don't vote for Donald Trump, maybe. He doesn't have to know. He doesn't have to know. This is your choice, private choice between you and your ballot. And mm. that no one can take away from you for now. Oh, what a powerful message on what framing I had never really even considered. And I love it because it's so important. Girl, just tell them, you know how you do with those boxes at Christmas? You're like, oh, that was baby formula. Or right. like, the ballots, okay? Like, <laughs> right, right. It's like, yeah, like, you know, don't, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, what about that Trump guy? Sure, sure, yeah. yeah. That's what I did. Meanwhile, we know. But That's like, right. oh my God, Tara, thank you so much. This is so important. I think that this is exactly what people need to hear because I think people, I think it, that when faced with that binary choice, I think reason and rationality and democracy uh, will prevail. And I think that knowing that they have a permission structure to keep the course on that and that they don't have to feel like they need to you know, fall in line is so important right now. So. Yes. Thank you. I am such a fan. I really thank you, I, Joe. Love everything you do. Let's go destroy JD Vance now. <laughs> but yes, let's go. Let's go beat the bad guys. All right. Oh, That's what we gotta go. do. We gotta go beat the bad guys. And then you and I next summer can uh, have drinks down the shore in Jersey <laughs> and celebrate uh, the fact that we saved our democracy. We helped. Right? We helped. <laughs> oh my God. So last thing I'll say, I'm, I'm on driving down the shore because like you were down the shore the week before me. And then yeah. I went down the shore. And then my son's in the car and he's asking me all these questions about the Supreme Court decision, which oh, is God, know, yeah. because it's on his TikTok, I guess. You know, he's 14. So he goes, he goes, Mom, you know, all these times I laughed at you when you said your job was like to help try and save democracy because I'm a Karen. And he's like, You're such a Karen. I was like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, Uh, I kind of get it now. <laughs> 14 years old, right? So you're doing a good job because he's paying attention. And a lot of kids at 14 aren't paying attention. Well, they are now because the information flow through social media is so powerful. I had my my husband's um, really good friend he grew up with. Her daughter is 15 years old. And she was posting on her TikTok about Project 2025. And it was like 15 year old young black girl was like, yo, this is crazy. And and again, it's the power of celebrity because Taraji P. Hansen made talk about it at the BET Awards. You have to meet people where they are. You have to speak their, you know, speak plain language like conversation 
intentionally our yeah. our messaging and our ads they can't look like regular political ads because people mm. go like yeah okay whatever they tune yes. them out yeah. no we're talking right to you yeah. the way we all talk to each other because yeah. that's what people relate to we're relatable it's just like uh, just like you and me like yeah. we're all talking to each other here and so yeah. I'm I'm encouraged by that that the that the young folks are paying attention even though they can't vote yet but they're our next generation and we're exactly. doing it for them and you Damn. see my background here my homage to Jersey relax and let the Jersey girl handle it so love it love it, love <laughs> it. We right, are. right and we want we got to get them to that election so they can have a say and they know that too so that's if, right we don't get that if we get, don't get to this one we're not getting there I fear but right. oh man well Tara oh my gosh thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you every time I talk to you I feel so energized and I just Good. feel so proud Thank you. and i just love you so much well that Likewise. does it for this episode of the art with the kitty podcast you guys every week i'm gonna try and find these amazing like truth tellers and like people are gonna <laughs> fire you up because well, that's what we need right now and tara set mayor is 1000 percent one of those people so Thank oh you. my god let's go out there like, don't take work democracy cigarette for granted at all anymore get involved um yeah well we'll see you guys next week thank you again tara i love you i think you're the best okay Take care.